What's going on guys? Today I want to teach you how to raise your deadlift the Alpha Destiny way. And why am I qualified to give such advice? Well, I had 130 pounds to my pull off the floor in less than four months. I did it beltless, drug free, and as a man with bad genetics uh, for deadlifts. So my advice is a lot different from what other people suggest. Most guys, when you look up advice, they're gonna say increase the frequency at which you pull. Uh, do more deadlifts, do more volume. It's always the same thing. The key home message is that they're saying do deadlifts to get better at deadlifting. And it makes a lot of sense, right? You wanna play baseball to get better at baseball. You wanna play football to get better at football. But here's what people fail to understand, the fact that if you keep doing this, number one, your recovery is gonna be impeded because everybody knows that if you pull off the floor, you, you, can, you cannot do it for a long period of time, it's just gonna burn you out, which means shit your sets. And then secondly, but secondly, the biological law of accommodation will, will come in and fuck you up the ass, real talk. That's what's gonna happen because after about three weeks of exercise, like strenuous exercise of doing one movement, what happens is your body plateaus. It can no longer make adaptations and you'll actually move backwards. I didn't invent this, by the way. You can learn about it in uh, Science and Practice of Strength Training and a lot of other uh, exercise science textbooks. So if you keep doing the deadlift over and over and over again, the only way you're going to be able to keep it in your program, okay, is by managing a volume and intensity such that you are doing either undulating or linear periodization. And as we all know, there's a lot of problems with these types of periodization styles. Minimalist training will lead to minimal results. Number one, you're eliminating a lot of acceler um, uh, accessory work <laughs> towards the end of the program. Number two, you're not following the force velocity relationship of weights. Like you're not uh, working above 90% all the time. So you actually, your performance is going backwards. Uh, number three, your work pass is going to go to shit. Like once, once you do singles, right? You're, you're up to that one rep max. Then you got to go all the way back down to say five sets of 10 or whatever you're doing. Your work pass is going to be garbage. Right, so you're, you're moving up and down the roller coaster. It is a, it's a big issue for deadlifts, man. And you're, you're missing out on valuable time that could have been maxing out. So in my opinion, you should do the concurrent route, which is do different deadlift variations but max out every single week. And this is how I did it in four months. Think about it. Most guys, how many times do they max out? Once every uh, two, three months? I did it every single week. You saw it documented on camera. What I did was... A progressive range of motion, a rack pulls, but it could also be block pulls, in addition to band deadlifts. And then this way, you could still keep the lift in, you could still max out and make maximum gains. So my advice for anyone who wants a stronger pull is use similar variations, but max out every fucking week. Have a volume day, have an intensity day, and just rotate the lifts. It's so freaking simple, guys, yet it works so amazingly. And you don't plateau this way. It's not like you're riding up uh, the roller coaster of volume and intensity, and then suddenly you plateau because you can't get past that weight. No, it's literally, it's gains after gains after gains. And each special exercise, it has direct carryover to the main lift. That's the beauty about it. So my advice is uh, pull off four inch blocks. Well, two, four, and six inch blocks. You don't want to go above that because it's less specific uh, to pulling off the floor. And then you also want to do a lot of band uh, deadlifts. You can even do speed pulls, like 10 sets of two with 40, 60%, right? And using a lot of bands with that. Um, and that's really the best way to train, man. And also, like, you can throw in band cycles for your deadlifts. So week one, strong band. Week two, average band. Week three, light band. Week four, monster mini. Five, mini. Like, you can rotate band tension. So you're, you got five weeks of band t uh, tension rotations. You got uh, three pulling styles, either two, four, six inches. Like, that's seven variations right there. If you just rotate that shit, that's seven weeks. If you keep rotating back and forth, back and forth, your gains are just going to go up through the roof. There's no way you could fuck it up. And that's why my gains were so freaking linear. People said that my gains were uh, equivalent to a guy who was on high doses of roids. I did it twice a fucking week, not even doing the, pra the, the classical lift, just variations, yet it went up every single time I attempted it. So this should be proof in itself that a uh, concurrent is the way to go. And that's what I recommend all of my clients uh, do. When I write strength training programs, it's concurrent one-on-one because it fucking works. And this advice is not just applied to the deadlift, by the way. If you want a bigger bench, it will be the same freaking principles. You know, instead of doing the flat bench, uh, linear periodization style, you would max out every single week, but rotate uh, the variation. So week one, close grip bench. Week two, uh, close grip bench with mini bands. Week three, close grip bench with monsters. Week four, maybe a reverse band. Week five, a, a close grip pin press. Like, it's so fucking simple, yet it works so amazingly. So. This is kind of like what I do and actually enhances how I follow my training program. And it really is, it's the best way to manage your recovery because if all you do is pulls off the floor, your lower back's gonna get fucking fried. <laughs> and secondly, it's a great way to overload your nervous system through all these, uh, these um, what's it called, the accommodating resistance pulls and uh, the block pulls as well. So I think this combination is gonna give you the best results. And also, if I can give one final suggestion, I would highly suggest that you do a lot of direct lower back and ab work. If you can get your hyper extensions up, your reverse hypers, uh, your good mornings maybe, even your standing cable crunches, your weighted planks, 
automatically raises your deadlift, especially if you're gonna be bellless. If you're, if you're bellless, you need a super, super strong pair of abs, man. You gotta have strong abs, strong lower back. It's just very, very important. I feel like a lot of people, they're not doing enough lower back and ab work, and then they're complaining that they're visiting Snap C. Like, just think about it, man. You're gonna do deadlifts for like, what, two months? High frequency pulling off the floor with no lower back and ab work? Are you out of your fucking mind? Like, shit. I, I can understand why people are, are, are fracturing their discs and getting all kinds of problems. It's because they're not training the proper way. I don't visit Snap City and I don't intend on visiting it because uh, concurrent training maximizes recovery and maximizes strength development. So I'm not worried and you shouldn't be either if you follow the system. So hope this video helps you out. That's how you get a bigger deadlift, Alpha Destiny style. It worked for me. And hell, I'm a fucking manly with T-Rex arms. I lock weights above my dick. And I have hypermobile elbows. So if I could do it, you could do it too. Talk to you guys next time.